The kingdom of Lyrian was a mysterious realm hidden among dense forests, high mountains, and perpetual mists. Its people lived in peace, benefiting from the bounties of nature. However, this peace was shattered with the sudden death of King Alden, replaced by anxiety and uncertainty. As the kingdom sought a new leader, the hopes of the people turned to the young Prince Thorian. King Alden's funeral was held magnificently, with people from all corners of the kingdom in attendance. Queen Alara, wiping away her tears, placed her hand on her son Thorian's shoulder. My son, our people need you. You are the one who will protect your father's legacy and make our kingdom strong again. Encouraged by his mother's words, Thorian responded, Mother, I will follow in my father's footsteps and protect the kingdom of Lyrian. But this task would not be easy. The kingdom's loyal advisor, Elendor, approached Prince Thorian and said, Your Majesty, there are envoys who wish to see you. They all hope for peace under your leadership. Sitting on the throne, Thorian took a deep breath. Let's receive them, Elendor. This will be our first step towards ensuring peace. The envoys had come from all over the kingdom of Lyrian, each chosen by people who wished to see the kingdom reborn. Thorian spoke with each envoy, listened to their requests, and made plans for the reconstruction of the kingdom. Your Majesty, the villagers in the eastern region are suffering from a water shortage, said one envoy. We have been struggling with this problem for years. Thorian listened attentively to the envoy's words. I will take immediate action to resolve this issue. We will start working to find new water sources and improve irrigation systems. These words lit a spark of hope on the faces of the envoys. Under Thorian's leadership, it seemed that the kingdom of Lyrian would flourish once more. However, a threat was growing at the kingdom's border, overshadowing this peace. While Prince Thorian continued his peace efforts, the Dark Lord Arathor did not remain idle. Arathor began to take advantage of the Kingdom of Lyrian's vulnerability by launching attacks on the border villages. These attacks were not only a challenge to Thorian, but also strategic moves to shake the people's confidence. One night, a village at the farthest edge of the kingdom was attacked by Arathor's soldiers. The villagers woke up in the middle of the night to find themselves engulfed in flames. Sir Cedric, one of Thorian's loyal commanders, set out for the village as soon as he received news of the attack. We must protect our villagers, Sir Cedric shouted, rallying his soldiers. For the memory of King Alden, for the honor of Queen Alara, we will fight. When Sir Cedric and his soldiers arrived at the village, they were met with a scene of destruction. Houses were burning, and people were fleeing in terror. Cedric ordered his soldiers to defend the village and engaged in battle with the enemy. In the midst of the fight, a group of children were trapped among the flames. Help us! Please help us! One of the children screamed. Without hesitation, Sir Cedric rushed to the children and led them to safety. Do not be afraid. We will protect you, he said, trying to calm the fear in their eyes. The battle raged on for hours, but in the end... Sir Cedric and his soldiers managed to defend the village. However, the victory came at a great cost. Many soldiers and civilians lost their lives, and the village suffered significant damage. Although Sir Cedric had succeeded in defending the village, the losses and destruction deeply affected Queen Alara. These border attacks were only a sign of Arathor's threat, and Thorian knew he needed to take more strategic steps to defend his kingdom. Thorian immediately moved to strengthen the Kingdom of Lyrian's allies and seek support through diplomatic means. Advisor Elendor, trusted by the Queen, led the organization of diplomatic talks. My Queen, said Elendor, we must form alliances with neighboring kingdoms and gain their support. We cannot face Arathor's threat alone. Thorian accepted Elendor's suggestion and sent his most trusted envoys to the neighboring kingdoms. The first envoys were sent to the western kingdom of Viridia. With its powerful army and strategic position, the kingdom of Viridia could be a crucial ally for the kingdom of Lyrian. The envoys, who reached Elysium, the capital of the kingdom of Viridia, were received by King Richard. Richard listened carefully to Thorian's situation and the threat posed by Arathor. Queen Alara, your courage and leadership are known by everyone, said Richard. We will do everything we can to help the Kingdom of Lyrian. These words brought great relief to the envoys from the Kingdom of Lyrian. Richard promised to send soldiers and resources to the Kingdom of Lyrian. They would also cooperate to secure trade routes. 
Queen Alara found solace in the positive news from the Kingdom of Viridia, but one ally was not enough. Thorian also sent envoys to the Eastern Kingdom of Feronia, known for its powerful navy and trade networks. King Magnus of the Kingdom of Feronia welcomed Thorian's envoys with great courtesy. My queen, said Magnus, Arathor's threat affects not only your kingdom but the entire region. By forming an alliance with you, we will fight this threat together. These alliances provided significant support to the Kingdom of Lyrian. Thorian immediately took action to instill hope and confidence in his people. My people, said Thorian, with the support of our allies we will stand against Arathor's threat. Together we will defend our kingdom and rebuild. While Queen Alara's diplomatic efforts were bearing fruit, the Dark Lord Arathor's plans were still ongoing. Arathor sent spies and saboteurs to weaken the kingdom of Lyrian from within. These spies targeted key points within the kingdom, creating chaos. One night, one of the most important granaries in the kingdom of Lyrian suddenly caught fire. The flames spread rapidly, causing extensive destruction. Sir Cedric and his soldiers mobilized to extinguish the fire. However, they were soon to realize that the fire was the result of sabotage. This fire is Arathor's doing, Cedric said, clenching his teeth. We will find and punish those who betrayed our queen. Cedric launched a widespread investigation to find those responsible for the fire. Spies worked day and night to identify the culprits. Meanwhile, Elendor took measures to enhance security within the palace. Reporting to Queen Alara, Elendor said, My queen, according to our spies, those who started the fire are Arathor's men. However, we need more information. Taking a deep breath, Alara said, Elendor, provide our spies with every support they need. We must do whatever it takes to thwart Arathor's plans. Meanwhile, Arathor's plans were not limited to sabotage. Arathor secretly formed alliances with some nobles within the Kingdom of Lyrian, planning to incite a rebellion against Thorian. These nobles, lured by Arathor's promises, agreed to jeopardize the kingdom for their own interests. One night, Arathor held a secret meeting with the rebellious nobles. Ilara's leadership is weak and fragile, said Arathor. If we act together, we can dethrone her and take over the kingdom of Lyrian. The nobles were convinced by Arathor's words and began preparations for the rebellion. However, a spy who was aware of this meeting immediately informed Queen Alara. Upon learning of these treacherous plans, Alara, filled with great anger and determination, said, Elendor, Cedric, we must act immediately. We will quash this rebellion before it begins and thwart Arathor's treacherous plans. Cedric ordered his soldiers to capture the rebellious nobles in an operation. In night raids, many rebels were caught and brought to justice. However, some managed to escape and sought refuge with Arathor. Queen Alara thanked Elendor and Cedric for uncovering these treacherous plans. Without your courage and determination, this rebellion could have succeeded, said Alara. Modestly, Elendor replied, My queen, serving you in our kingdom is our greatest honor. Alara further strengthened her commitment to her people and kingdom during this difficult time. My people, said Alara, we have thwarted Arathor's treacherous plans. However, our struggle is not over yet. Together, we will defend and rebuild our kingdom. These events led to the purification of traitors within the kingdom of Lyrian and strengthened Alara's leadership even more. However, the threat of Arathor still loomed, and Alara was preparing for more challenging struggles to protect her kingdom. Following successful moves to defend the borders of the kingdom of Lyrian and cleanse internal traitors, Queen Alara and her loyal advisors were trying to anticipate the Dark Lord Arathor's next move. It was clear that Arathor's attacks would not cease, and Alara knew she needed to take more measures to protect her kingdom. One day, Elendor came to Queen Alara with urgent news. My queen, our spies report that Arathor is gathering his army for a major attack, said Elendor. They are advancing towards our borders. War seems inevitable. Upon hearing this news, Alara's resolve strengthened. If war is coming, we will be ready for it, she said. Elendor, gather Sir Cedric and the other commanders. We need to devise a war strategy. Responding to Alara's call, Sir Cedric arrived at the palace immediately. My queen, what strategy will we employ against Arathor's army? Asked Cedric. Speaking over a map, Alara said, Arathor's army is strong, but we are not weak. We will strengthen our border areas and place defensive units at strategic points. 
we must also call for aid from our allies. The kingdoms of Viridia and Feronia have promised us support. Elendor quickly set out to send messages to the allies. Meanwhile, preparations for war continued in villages and towns. To boost morale, Alara visited the people. My people, said Alara, together we are strong and invincible. War is at our doorstep, but with our courage and unity we will win this war. As the war preparations continued, Arathor's army approached the border regions. The soldiers of the Kingdom of Lyrian were positioned at the border, ready for battle. Elara, Sir Cedric, and the other commanders went to the border to boost the morale of the soldiers. This war will determine the fate of our kingdom, Cedric said, addressing the soldiers. Under the leadership of our queen, we will stand against our enemy and protect our kingdom. It's time to show your courage and loyalty. The soldiers were encouraged by Cedric's words. As Alara looked at the battlefield, her determination and courage grew even stronger. We will stop Arathor, she said to herself. We will protect our kingdom and bring peace to our people. When Arathor's armies reached the borders of the Kingdom of Lyrian, the first clash became inevitable. Arathor's powerful army launched a major attack on the border regions of the Kingdom of Lyrian. This attack was a huge shock for the Kingdom of Lyrian. Arathor's armies were known for their strong armor and the bravery of their warriors. This army displayed great power on the battlefield. The first clash caused great losses not only for the soldiers, but also for the people. The border villages of the Kingdom of Lyrian were attacked by Arathor, and the people living in these villages suffered greatly. The soldiers of the Kingdom of Lyrian showed resistance in the border regions, trying to halt Arathor's advance. However, they struggled against Arathor's powerful army. Prince Thorian fought bravely on the battlefield, trying to keep his people's morale high. Thorian, with his warrior spirit, was at the front lines, encouraging his soldiers. His leadership was a great source of morale for the soldiers of the Kingdom of Lyrian. Thorian fought bravely, supporting his soldiers even in the most intense moments of the battle. His bravery was a great inspiration for the soldiers of the Kingdom of Lyrian. Advisor Elendor, on the other hand, demonstrated strategic leadership by strengthening the defense lines of the Kingdom of Lyrian. Elendor made strategic moves that changed the course of the battle, trying to halt Arathor's advance. His wisdom and strategic insight enabled the Kingdom of Lyrian to show resistance in the war. Elendor, even in the most critical moments of the war, maintained his composure and guided his soldiers. This first clash was only the beginning of a great war between the two kingdoms. The Kingdom of Lyrian and Arathor both suffered great losses in this clash, but neither side gave up on fighting. After the first clash, both kingdoms regrouped their armies and began preparing for the Great War. This war would determine not only the fate of the two kingdoms, but also the entire region. To counter Arathor's attacks, the Kingdom of Lyrian sought help from an old ally, the Forest Kingdom. The Forest Kingdom's powerful warriors and mages mobilized to support the Kingdom of Lyrian. Meanwhile, Arathor also gathered his own allies to increase his power. Prince Thorian met with Queen Althea, the leader of the Forest Kingdom. My queen, your support is very important to us. We must fight together against the threat of Arathor, said Thorian. Responding to Thorian's call, Althea said, Thorian, we will win this war by forming an alliance with you. The entire power of the Forest Kingdom is with you. This alliance provided great morale and support to the Kingdom of Lyrian. The warriors, mages, and strategic knowledge of the Forest Kingdom strengthened the defense of the Kingdom of Lyrian. With Althea's support, Thorian reinforced his army and became more resilient against Arathor. The great war between the two kingdoms became a battle where all forces descended onto the battlefield, determining their fate. Prince Thorian and Elendor, with the support of the Forest Kingdom, tried to thwart Arathor's plans. This great war resulted in heavy losses for both sides. The battlefield was filled with the sounds of swords clashing, war cries, and explosions of magic. Thorian was fighting at the front lines of the battle. Fight for the Kingdom of Lyrian, he shouted boosting the morale of his soldiers. We will stand against Arathor's tyranny. Queen Althea, along with the mages of the Forest Kingdom, was casting spells on the battlefield to support the soldiers of the Kingdom of Lyrian. The power of nature is with us, she shouted as she cast spells. While Elendor managed the strategic moves of the battle, Thorian's bravery and Althea's magic tried to change the course of the war. However, Arathor's army was also strong, and the outcome of the war was uncertain. 
Arathor's generals positioned their soldiers at strategic points, trying to surround the Lyrian army. The soldiers of the Kingdom of Lyrian showed great resistance against Arathor's warriors, but struggled against the enemy's numbers and power. In the midst of the battle, Thorian encountered one of his closest friends, Sir Cedric. Cedric was covered in blood but had not given up fighting. Thorian, said Cedric, I am fighting one of Arathor's generals. I need your help. Running to Cedric's side, Thorian said, We will win this war together. The two friends fought side by side, pushing back their enemies. While Thorian supported Cedric, Althea was rendering the enemies ineffective with her spells. At this moment, Arathor decided to play his last card to change the course of the war. He sent his own mages and special units into the battle. Arathor's mages attacked the Lyrian army with dark magic, while the special units directly targeted Thorian and Althea. While fighting Arathor's special units, Thorian shouted, We will not give up so easily. Althea fought alongside Thorian, pushing back the enemies with her spells. However, Arathor's mages began causing great damage to the Lyrian army with their dark magic. Noticing this, Elendor said, Thorian, Althea, we must neutralize Arathor's mages, otherwise we might lose this war. Following Elendor's orders, Thorian and Althea advanced towards Arathor's mages. Althea distracted the enemy mages with her spells, allowing Thorian to approach them. Thorian charged into the mages, neutralizing them with his sword. Arathor's mages were forced to retreat in the face of Thorian and Althea's combined strength. As the intensity of the war increased, the soldiers of the kingdoms of Lyrian and Forest managed to push back Arathor's army. However, both sides suffered heavy losses. The battlefield was filled with wounded and dead soldiers. At the end of the war, Thorian checked on his wounded friends, trying to help them. At the end of the Great War, a peace treaty was signed between the Kingdom of Lyrian and Arathor. Having suffered great losses, Arathor was forced to retreat. Under the leadership of Thorian and Althea, the Kingdom of Lyrian achieved a great victory. However, this victory came at a high cost. Many soldiers lost their lives on the battlefield, and the kingdom experienced significant destruction. Queen Alara thanked Thorian and Althea, saying, Thanks to your courage and leadership, we protected our kingdom. However, the deep sorrow on Alara's face showed the depth of the wounds left by the war. Alara made efforts to share the pain of the families who had lost soldiers, offering her condolences. Addressing his people, Thorian said, My people, we won together. This victory is a testament to our unity and courage. The future of the Kingdom of Lyrian is bright. Thorian's words boosted the morale of the people, though it did not fully ease the pain of their losses. As Althea returned to the Forest Kingdom, she bid farewell to Thorian. Thorian, it was an honor to fight alongside you. We will continue to support each other in the future, she said. Shaking Althea's hand, Thorian said, Althea, we could not have won this war without your support. We have forged a strong bond between our kingdoms. We will continue to work together in the future. After the war, Queen Alara led the reconstruction efforts. Great efforts were made to treat the wounded soldiers, rebuild the destroyed villages, and support the families mourning their losses. Thorian, under his mother's leadership, actively participated in the reconstruction process. He made every sacrifice to lift the people's spirits and rebuild the kingdom. After the war, the Kingdom of Lyrian worked to build a future of peace and prosperity. Under the leadership of Thorian and Althea, a strong alliance was formed between the kingdoms. This alliance not only provided security against Arathor's threat, but also against future potential threats. Under the leadership of Alara, Thorian, and Althea, the Kingdom of Lyrian became a strong and prosperous realm once again. The people looked to the future of their kingdom with confidence, united in solidarity. With the support of his mother and allies, Thorian had protected and rebuilt his kingdom. Elara, proud of Thorian's leadership, looked to the future of the kingdom with hope. As the kingdom of Lyrian healed the wounds of the war, it entered a period of reconstruction. Thorian and Althea initiated new reforms to increase the welfare of their people. Although Arathor's threat had ended, a stronger unity was formed for the future of the kingdom. Looking at Thorian and Althea, Queen Elara said, this kingdom will be reborn under your leadership. Together, we will make the kingdom of Lyrian stronger and more prosperous. Thorian, approving his mother's words, said, 
Yes, mother. Together we will lead this kingdom to a brighter future. After the war, the kingdom of Lyrian was reborn and took steps towards a future of peace. Under the leadership of Thorian, Althea, and Alara, the kingdom became a strong and prosperous realm once again.